Hello, how are you doing? I uh, hope it's another beautiful day. And I'm here today and uh, today I have a message for you. I want to speak about the sinner's prayer. I want to speak about the sinner's prayer. I call it a heresy because there's no way in the Bible where we see uh, somebody who was led to Christ using a prayer. And uh, is that what the Bible says? That the Bible say that... Uh, you know, when you pray and you're a sinner, God is going to hear you. Is he going to hear you? Does God even listen to a, to a sinner? So today we're going to speak about the same and we want to see exactly, is this sinner's prayer a really a b- b- biblical doctrine or is it a madman, a man-made doctrine? Is it some people just come up and say, okay, you can say this and then you're saved. You can say this prayer, you can say this and that. Is that what the Bible teaches? I want us to understand this today, and uh, when we understand this, it's going to be much, much, much more easier for us to be able to dissect the Bible very, very, very well. So right now, we can be able to, maybe, let, let me just uh, draw this a little bit and uh, show you exactly where we are. You see, when you go to a mall, you're always, uh, this is Adam, you, you always go to a map which tells you here is where you are in the mall. All right. So it's always good to know exactly where are you right now, according to the Bible. So we have Adam. We have the time of Moses. All right. We have also the time of uh, Jesus. Okay. Jesus shows up here. We have Jesus. And then we have also now we have something called the church age. All right. This is the church age this time here and then we have the time of the the rapture the rapture happens and then we have uh, the tribulate i mean the, the rapture happens and then we have the time of the armageddon this is the time for the tribulation this is the tribulation and then we have uh, the millennial kingdom all right so that's the millennial kingdom this is the tribulation time so the bible tells us we are around here this is where we are here we are here all right so we are told that we are here and what does the bible say about this time period here it is a time of apostasy apostasy or the great falling away people will fall away from the true doctrine they will stop doing what jesus had so said all across the bible and all that jesus and all that people believed during the time of the church age because right now we are not under any other ministry. We are under the ministry of Paul, all right? Apostle Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Romans 11, uh, 8, 11, 11, 8. I, I'll check that verse. It, where, where it says, I am the apostle of the Gentiles. As much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. So Paul tells us, hey, I'm the apostle to the Gentiles. So right now we are in the ministry of Paul and we should know that we are saved by the gospel which was revealed to Apostle Paul. So we are here. And then we are told this time there will be a lot of great falling away. People will fall away from the right doctrine, from the right teachings which are supposed to be. And then they will start believing in another thing which is like here what we see the sinner's prayer. Let's, let's just confirm those words. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. Uh, let's see what it says. Uh, 2 verse 3 it says let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come which day the day of the rapture except they are come a falling away first and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition so we're told that there'll be a falling away here falling away apostasy apostasy all right. So this time there'll be a lot of apostasy. People will be falling away from the true doctrine. Others will be saying, oh, there's a great harvest, a great harvest. Are we told there is a great harvest or are we told there's a falling away? You see, people really confuse and people really change the doctrine to fit their desires so that they can say, no, 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 you, know, you see, we have to join up together. This is a time of us being together. Something big is going to happen. No, we are being told by the Bible there'll be a great apostasy. So why are you saying there'll be a great harvest? Those are two different things. All right. So when you see that, you already know that people are falling away from the truth. People are falling away from what the Bible says. All right. We can even confirm as well again in 1 Timothy 4.1, 1 Timothy 4.1 uh, to 2. 
Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking in lies and hypocrisy and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So you see, people will go to some doctrines, which are, we call them the doctrines of devils, all right? We call them the doctrines of devils. So people are right now currently concentrating so much in some doctrines that you can't even understand where they are from. Hey, say this sinner's prayer. Say this and this and this and this. You really ask yourself, <laughs> uh, is, is that what the Bible says? Does the Bible say a, a prayer can, can save you? Can a prayer really save you? Because most people tend to think that, hey, when you say this prayer, then you can be saved. All right. So let, let's also see 2 Timothy 3 1. Let's see what it also says. 2 Timothy 3 1. It says this eh? This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Is this happening? Covacious, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, and thankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good. You see, all these things, we're already seeing them happening. We're already seeing this happening so, 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 so much. People dislike others who are good. They really dislike. If you're good, you're hated. You're hated. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh -huh. Having a form of godliness. See verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such turn away. So these, these fellas will have a certain form of godliness. It's like they, they know God. It's somehow like they know God. But then they deny the power. The power is found where? The power is found in the blood of Jesus Christ. So they deny the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. This blood which was shed for us, they deny. They deny. They say, no, 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 no. You can do anything anything else apart from the blood don't, don't don't worry about the blood forget about the blood the blood is not going to do anything to you you have to do something there's something that you need to do when you do this you will go to heaven forget about the blood the blood is not anything you see that's what they'll be saying they'll be telling you forget this blood you see this blood which was shed by jesus christ they tell you is of no use okay you just need to do something. Just say this prayer and then you'll be saved. Just say this prayer. Oh, no, 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 don't, don't look at the blood. <laughs> that is what is going to happen. They'll be having a form of godliness by denying the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. All right? And the Bible tells us from such turn away. All right? From such turn away. Okay? Uh, now, having heard that, or maybe, I don't know, Having heard that, there's one thing that I always tell people. You have to understand that you're saved by Jesus Christ, by what he did for you. You're saved by the gospel. Many people don't really understand what saves you. You're saved by the gospel. And where is the gospel? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. This is the gospel. Uh, this is the gospel. All right. It's always good to say that because most people don't even know where the gospel is. The gospel says, let's go there, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Which I preached unto you, which you have received, and wherein you stand. So, this is the gospel that you receive. And then, uh, which I, I preached unto you, you have to hear the gospel preached. Which you have received, so you have to receive the gospel, and wherein you stand. So, you have to also to stand in the gospel. By which also you are saved. So, you are saved by the gospel. You are saved by the gospel. So, this is the one which saves you nothing else. Okay? If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, so you have to keep in memory what was preached. You have to keep in memory this gospel. This is your certificate. If you don't keep in memory this gospel, then you'll be losing it, all right? Unless you have believed in vain. What is believing in vain? Believing in vanity. The word vanity comes from, the word vanity comes from vain, all right? Vain is thinking that there's something that you can do apart from this, 
or maybe something that you can do to earn yourself salvation. You don't believe the gospel wholly. You believe that, you know, Jesus saved me up to here and then I can add something else to save myself. So that is believing in vain. Like the Pharisees, they knew the Bible so well. They knew the scriptures, the scrolls. But then they only believed it from their heads, not from their hearts. You see, I always say that you can miss, <laughs> you can miss heaven with only 18 inches, you know, be because of depending on where you put the gospel. If you put it here, then you're going to miss heaven. God demands you believe from your heart, not believe from your mind, okay? Uh, by which also you are saved, did you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain? For I delivered unto you first of all, which I also received. So Paul says, I'm delivering you a gospel which I also received, okay? Uh -huh. How that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So he tells us how Christ died. This is how Christ died. He shed his own blood. The blood is what cleansed us off from our sins. So you see, today's uh, the salvation, the sinner's prayer, is denying the blood of Jesus Christ. They tell you, no, 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 you don't really have to hear the gospel. You can just say this prayer and you're saved. Is that what saves us? No, we are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are not saved by this prayer. This prayer cannot save you. And I'm going to prove that one to you. All right? Let's continue. Uh, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So you have to believe that Christ died. For our sins, he was buried, he rose again, according to the scriptures. That is the gospel. When you believe that, you're saved. Now, are these fellas saying the same thing? No. They always tell you that, hey, uh, you can just say this and that. You can always say, do this and that, and then you can be saved. Is that really what saves us? No, I don't think you're saved by saying a certain thing. You're not saved by saying this or you're not saved by doing something. You, there's nothing that you can do to be saved. There's nothing that you can do to be saved. Actually, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8 uh, to 9, it says, By grace you're saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the Bible tells us you're not saved by your own works. It's not something that you do that can save you. You're saved only by trusting in the finished work of Christ at the cross. So all these other things that you need to do, then you're lying to yourself. You'll, <laughs> you will just say that prayer and then you go to hell. It will not work, all right? So the, this new modern Christianity is always teaching, do this, repeat this, and all that. And of course, we know. We know they are saying that because there's a great falling away. People are falling away from what they used to believe, what they used to trust, all right? In the early days of the church age, people used to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. Right now, people are coming up with other stories. You know, God gave me a vision. I saw this. I saw that. You can check my other video about why I left the Pentecostal religion. It's because... Most of these fellas, they are falling away. The, the dad and, and the mom kind of churches, you know, dad, dad, this is our dad, this is our papa. All those kind of things, those are lies, those are hypocrisies. These people are, the Bible clearly tells us, call no one here on earth, father, for there is only one father who is in heaven. So why are you calling some bishop, some pastor, father, this is my dad, this is my spiritual dad? Forget about that. God could have told us, Call only the spiritual dad's father. He didn't say that. He said only one father is in heaven. So when you see these people, these are religious hypocrites, all right? Telling you another gospel, teaching you another gospel, which is not in the Bible, falling away to another thing, all right? And uh, some of them, they say, you know, repenting, you have to repent and then you do something. Repent and repenting, yes, it's spoken in the Bible. But do you clearly understand what the word repentance means? Repentance literally means turn away from trusting one thing to trusting another thing. It has three meanings. Repenting is turn away from this thing that you believed to turning to another one, or change of mind, change your mind from doing this thing to doing this thing, and also feel sorry for having done this to starting to do another thing. So repentance is literally you are facing this side and you turn all through and you change your mind to another thing. Repenting does not mean stop sinning. You see, most people think that repentance means stop sinning. Now let me prove to you. The Bible says, 
There are almost 32 different Bible verses, especially in the Old Testament, which talk about God repenting. And God repented himself for having created man. And God repented from uh, destroying Israel. And God repented on this. God repent. Was God a sinner? So if you say repentance means stop sinning, was God a sinner? No. It means God repented for having created man. He felt sorry for having created man. God repented from destroying Israel. He wanted to destroy Israel, but he repented himself from destroying Israel. He changed his mind from destroying Israel and he said, I will not destroy Israel. Are you seeing the difference between the word repentance? Because most of these people tell you, no, 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 you have to do something so that you can earn salvation. No, the Bible tells us our righteousness is like filthy rags according to God. So there's nothing that we can do unless we have Jesus imputed all of on us. The Jesus imputed righteousness is the only one which can save us. It's not by something that you need to do. It's not by something that you have to say. No. You can't be saved by saying something. No. We even see Apostle Peter in Acts 15.7 saying, The Gentiles by my mouth should hear the gospel and believe. Peter even confirms that, hey, it is all by believing. They should hear the gospel and believe. You see, for you to be saved, you need to do several things. For you to be saved, uh, I I don't want to use the word you need to do. You, You have to understand several things, all right, to be saved. Number one, you have to understand that you're lost, all right? you're lost. All right? You have to understand that you're lost. Before you can get saved, you have to understand you're lost. Then when you know that you're lost, you have to uh, hear hear the gospel. All right? You have to understand, hey man, I'm really lost. I'm really lost. I can't save myself. Then you must look for the gospel. Then you hear the gospel. Then After hearing the gospel, you have to understand, all right, understand the gospel. Then after you understand the gospel, then is when you believe the gospel, all right, believe the gospel. There are so many people who say, no, 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 you just, you don't need to, you don't need to hear the gospel. Just repeat this. There are so many people who just wake up and say, today I went uh, soul winning and and I won three people to Christ. Wow, wow, what happened? <laughs> Imagine those guys, I told them, do you want to go to hell? They said no. I told them, okay, if you don't want to go to hell, just repeat this prayer. And <laughs> it's like I tricked these people into salvation. Can you trick someone into salvation? No. Why? Because they have to understand first that they are lost. They have to hear the gospel. Have you told them the gospel? First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Have you told them, hey, This is what Jesus did for you. Have they heard the gospel? Then after hearing, have they understood what really happened? Because when you understand, the message comes from your your mind to your heart. You see, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees knew the gospel. They knew the gospel. They knew what, uh, okay, that time there was no gospel. They knew about Jesus, but then they had not believed him from their heart. You see, you can hear, you can hear and know. It, it, right now, everybody believes that there is Jesus. You see, there are people who just say, ah, I believe in Jesus. Fine. Even the devils believe and they tremble. Everybody believes. Even if you stop a Muslim there and you ask him, do you know Jesus? Yeah, he's even written in the, in, in the Quran. So I know, I know there's a guy called Jesus who existed and actually he died. I know. But then have they understood what really happened? Have they understood what was the purpose of Jesus dying? So when you understand, you analyze, it goes from your head to your heart. And then you believe. So we believe from our heart. We don't believe from our minds. So it's really important for you to be able to understand this and know that a sinner's prayer cannot save you. No matter how much you just repeat that, you'll just be wasting your time. And the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 4.3, 2 Corinthians 4.3, The Bible says, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So if the gospel is hid, it is hid to those who are lost. So are you among the people who are lost, who cannot know even where the gospel is? If you find yourself, you don't even know where the gospel is. You see, most people think that the gospel is 
is the Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke. No, those are the Gospels. Gospels and Gospel, those are two different things. The Gospels showing the life of Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews that the, uh, a testament is only effected by the death of the testator. Who is the testator of the New Testament? Jesus Christ. So in Matthew, Mark, John, and Luke, was Jesus dead there? No. After he died, now the, the, effect, uh, the, the, the new covenant, the New Testament was effected. So we can literally say that Matthew, John, um, Luke, and uh, the four Gospels, those ones are still part of the Old Testament. Why? Because Jesus had not died. So this had not been effected. Now, how could when Jesus is here on earth, how could he say, hey, believe in me, I died for your sins. And you're saying you died, but you're, you're here. I don't understand, you know. Nobody could have understood that gospel. That's why Jesus revealed this gospel of our dispensation to Apostle Paul after Jesus had died and resurrected and gone up to heaven. So he revealed so that that could be the gospel that we are saved with right now. Not some prayer or something that we say. No, we are saved by believing in Christ, believing in what Jesus Christ did for us. All right? And you even see down there in verse uh, 4, it says, In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. All right? We preach not ourselves, but Christ the Lord. So the God of this world, Satan, has blinded people from this. Now, people just have a form of godliness, but they, they deny the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. They only tell you, no, 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 you just need to say this prayer, and then you're saved. You just need to say this prayer. No, 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 don't do anything else. Just say that prayer. No, that is, that is a big, 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 big lie. What if somebody repeats the prayer, sinner's prayer, but he never heard the gospel? Will he ever be saved? No, he can't. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. That is Romans 10, 14. It says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So first you have to hear the gospel, hear the gospel, and then you can have faith. To, the faith is the one, you, you see, you believe by faith, you know, believing. Believing is also another word for faith and also trusting. And the Bible says in Ephesians 1.13, in whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, after you heard, you first hear in whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, all right? In whom also after you believed, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. So you hear, you understand, and then you believe, all right? And then you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You're sealed, all right? And once you're sealed, your sins sealed once and for all, all right? In Acts 28, 27, let's see, Paul is even speaking something here he's talking about these people who believe in another thing and they they don't want to hear what the bible is saying acts 28 27 says for the heart for the heart of these people is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes are they close lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and should be converted and I should heal them. So these are words of Jesus Christ. So Paul is quoting what Jesus said. That's why these people are blind. They are closing their eyes. They don't want to see the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They're like, no, 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 no. Don't tell us anything. Just tell us to say the sinner's prayer. Is that what Jesus said? No. He's saying, you people, you're closing your eyes from seeing the truth, from hearing the truth. You're believing in another thing which cannot save you. That is not what I gave you. I didn't tell you you're going to be saved by a certain prayer. No. Nah. No, no, no. All right. So, if Jesus says believe, where is the prayer? Where is that story of prayer there? No, I'm not against prayer, but I'm only against a false teaching that a prayer can save you. A prayer can save no one. All right. All right. So now, we understand one thing, that a prayer, God can never answer a prayer. And I want us to check Right now, we check intensively very well. Can God really hear a prayer? You see, let's say you are a sinner. You see, you are a sinner saying a prayer. Can God hear a prayer of a sinner? If you just decide, no, 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 Keith, you're wrong. Let's just, no, no, I've, there is always people who have always said a prayer. 
I've always said, oh, Jesus, come into my heart, Jesus, this and this and this, and then I was a sinner, and then I know God heard me. Can God literally hear the prayer of a sinner? Let's check that. Let's confirm. Job, the book of Job, 13, 12 to 13. 13, 12 to 13. Let's see. Job 13, 12, 13, it says, But if they obey not, they shall perish by the sword, and they shall die without knowledge. But the hypocrites in heart heap up wrath, they cry not when he bindeth them. So he's saying, if they don't obey, obey what? If in this dispensation you don't obey the gospel, in that time of Job is obeying what God has said. If you don't obey, then... You shall perish by the sword, yeah? and you shall die without knowledge. So you will die without knowledge just because you did not obey. You just said, mm, nah, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear, okay? Obey. So Jesus demands you obey, all right? So if you don't obey, then you will perish. Psalms 18.41, the Bible says, They cried. But there was none to save them, even unto the Lord. But he answered them not. So these fellas, they cried. They, they cried. They said, oh, God, please help us. But they were sinners. And the Bible says, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. God did not even answer them. They cried. They cried. They said, oh, Lord, please, we need your help. We need this now. He did not even hear. Why? Because they had not obeyed. Because God demands obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. He tells you, believe in the gospel. You don't want to believe. You're saying, now, nah, I'll do another thing. Sorry. He says, no, no, I don't, I don't want to do another thing. I don't want that. I don't want to obey. I just want to do this. So you'll die in your sins. You will die in your sins. Psalm 66, 18. 66, 18. It says, if... Uh, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. David is saying, if I regard iniquity in, in my heart, God will not hear me. God will not hear me if I regard iniquity, if I don't obey. Proverbs 1, 28 to 29. Then they shall call upon me and I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they... For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. When you hate knowledge, you hate to know. You hate to know what God has said. Do this is what I've given you. I've told you, hey, you better believe in the gospel. And you don't want to know what God has said. You say, now nah, I will go to God using a prayer. Then you shall call upon God and he will not answer you. All right, you shall seek him, but you shall not find him. Proverbs 28 9 He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. God says, If you turn away your ear from hearing what God has given or what God has taught, said, even your prayer shall be abomination. Do you know what's abomination? It's literally he doesn't want to hear. It's it's like no, no, you're bothering me. I don't want to hear what you're saying. I'm so much agitated and feeling bad about what you're telling me because it's it's I, I don't want to hear. Abomination is a very word, a hard word. God doesn't want to hear your stories. The book of Isaiah 115. All right. The Bible says, and when you and when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yeah, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. He says, those people who don't obey what you said, and you're there raising your hands and crying and speaking and doing and speaking in tongues and saying all those kind of things. If you don't obey what God has said, then he will not even hear. He will hide his face from you. You'll be saying, oh, Lord, please. No, God is like, no, no, no. I, I don't want to hear this story. No, these are not, no, this sinner. No, 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 no. There's something blocking me. Sin, 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 my friend. No, no, no. I don't want to hear. It's like, no. Keep raising your hands. Your hands are full of blood because you're doing something instead of trusting in what uh, he said that you should do. The book of Isaiah 50, 59, 1 to 2. 
Listen. Behold, the hand, uh, behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save. Neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. Um, he explains to you. He tells you you must obey. Obedience is everything. Unless you obey him. You see, there are those people who think that, nah, you see, it's like God is not hearing because maybe there's something that I've not done. No, it's not something that you have not done. It's because you're not believing in what he said. He says, do this. Trust. Trust in my finished work. And then you want to trust in something else. It's not that God's hand is not far to reach you. No, it's only you have been separated from him because of your sins. So it happens, it's, it's like this. It's like God is here. Forgive my prayer, uh, my nini, my drawings. And you're here, all right? You're here. And this blocking here, this is sin, all right? So unless you get out this sin from here, you can't have, you can't have fellowship together. And the only way to get this sin here is by obedience. Obey what he has told you. So once you obey, this veil of sin will be taken out between you and God. Jeremiah 11, 11. Jeremiah 11, 11. Therefore said the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they, they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. I will not hearken unto them. God is very specific and clear with his words. No matter how much you will say, how much you will pray, how much you will shout and say all those things, he will not hearken unto you. The book of Micah, Micah 3, 4, it says, Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. God says that time, they will cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. God does not hear the prayers of a sinner. He doesn't hear what you're saying. He's, he has blocked his ears to hear from a sinner because there's a big veil. God does not stay where there is a sin. So how will a sinner be able to reach God? No, you can only reach God through the righteousness of Christ and through believing and obeying what he has said. First, when you believe, you get the imputed righteousness. So you have that close relationships. He becomes your father and you become his son. And you become an adopted child when you hear the gospel and when you obey the gospel. Not a certain prayer. Alright? Not a certain prayer. Ezekiel 8.18 Therefore I will also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare. Neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. You see all those voices are saying, God is saying, I don't hear the prayer of a sinner. I don't hear. So stop telling me all these things. I don't, I, I can't hear. You see, many people can come up and say, no, no, you see, Kate, that is the Old Testament. That is the Old Testament. Let me show you at least one verse in the New Testament. Speaking about God not hearing anything concerning your iniquities and concerning your prayers. Talking about uh, how God can save you. No, he doesn't hear. John 9.31 John 9, 31, it says, Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worship of God and does his will, him he heareth. The Bible is very clear without any shout of a doubt that God does not hear sinners. Full stop. So if you're a sinner, don't pray. You're wasting your time. Believe the gospel. Accept you're lost. Hear the gospel. Understand and believe. That's the only thing which can save you. It is the only thing which can change you. You see, the reason people don't accept that they are sinners is because they can't accept that they are lost is because they have a lot of pride. Maybe you've grown in the church. You've always been in the church. You've always uh, understood this and that. You've always said, you know, I've been in the church for the longest time. So other people, somebody telling me that I need to say, uh, to, to, to believe in this. No, I, I've been raised knowing this, you see. You can't change me. It's because you are proud and you don't want to follow the gospel. When somebody comes and tells you, no, no, this is, this is anti what God is saying. You say, nah, 
I've found our church, we have always been doing this. These are our traditions. So those are traditions of men. So will you follow a man or will you follow the Bible? The choice is yours. Whichever choice that you make, it all depends with you. So now, let me speak about, let me, let me show you a few verses which, which make this sinner's prayer. Many people say, nah, but the sinner's prayer is in the Bible. But now, let me show you. I want to show you several verses which comprise and which create this whole sinner's prayer thing. And the first verse is found in Luke 18, 13. Luke, Luke 18, 13. This is the first verse which people try to say, yeah, you see, the Bible is talking about this. The Bible is saying about the sinner's prayer. Hmm? Luke 18, 13. Let's go there. Luke 18, verse 13 says, And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote up his breasts, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. This is the story of that, uh, the, 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 the guy who, when Jesus was in the synagogue, he was crying there at the corner and saying, Lord, I am I am sinner. Have mercy on me. I am worthless. I am and then there's this other guy who is saying, you know, I give my tithes, I do this and that, you know, I'm really good, God, I'm good more than so and so. And then Jesus was just looking and saying, no, this guy who is praying at the corner, he's the one whose un a prayer has been answered. He will go home more, feeling more better and feeling more fulfilled than the other one who is proud. And now people wake up and say, you see? You see, this prayer, this guy said, be merciful to me. And then he was saved. And uh, you see, you have to say something. No. Remember one thing. Let's look at the context. This is at the time of the law. It's not at the time of grace. So this is the time when Jesus was here. This is around here. This is around here. All right. Jesus has not even died. All right. Jesus had not even died. He was still here. And actually, Jesus was there in person. So as this guy was praying, Jesus was there and he answered that prayer right there and then. Okay, so, and also the gospel had not been given, the gospel of our dispensation, which was not given to Paul. Paul was not even yet revealed that gospel. So that cannot be a prayer which can save. Matthew 14, 28 to 31. Matthew, Matthew 14, 28 to 31. There are people who come and say, now this story, this one, uh, this one now is talking about the sinner's prayer. Let's see. Matthew 14, 28 to 31. And Peter answered uh, him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come to thee on water. And, when he, and he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, and he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. So people see, say, you see, Peter said, Lord, save me. Now when I say this, I'll also be saved. But they don't check the context here. Let's see verse 31. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, where did thou, why did, did you doubt? All right. So in short, number one, Jesus tells Peter, why are you doubting? It's all about faith. Why don't you have faith? So he still insists about believing. And number two, Peter was not even talking about the salvation of his of uh, eternal salvation. He was talking about being saved literally from drowning in water. So that is not anything to do with salvation. And also, that was the time of the law. Jesus was here in person. Okay? So that one cannot work. That can not work. Let's see also Romans 10, 13. Romans 10, 13. Now, people say, ah, now, Keith, yeah, 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 this one now is, to, is in our dispensation, is in our time, and uh, he's talking about exactly, he's talking to us directly. So, this way, somebody can be saved if you say this. Now, let's see. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So, people say, now, that's it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord. When you call, you'll be saved. But... Let's read the context here. Verse 14. 
How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? How will you call without believing? Believing in what? <laughs> the gospel. All right? How will you call when you have not even believed? Let's see. And how then shall they believe in whom they have not heard? So you have to hear the gospel. All right? Uh, and how shall they hear without a preacher? So somebody has to preach to you and tell you, my friend, you're lost. And then you get to hear, eh, yeah, I'm really lost. And then you understand and then you believe, okay? And you see, so many people think the word calling means speaking. Call. You see, many people think, no, when the Bible says call, it literally means open your mouth and say, Words, no. Calling is from the heart. Calling is from the heart. It's not opening your mouth. Let's confirm this. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul says something. He says, having the same spirit of faith, I believed, I believed, Paul is saying, having the same spirit of faith, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. So when you believe, you speak. Believe. You speak. Have you ever heard that Jesus does not look at your lip service. He looks for your heart. When you believe, you have spoken. And even says, uh, when I believe, I, I, uh, uh, I believed and I have spoken. We also believe, therefore speak. So the moment you believe, you have spoken. It's not about opening your mouth to say something. It's not something that you say as in as prayer. It's by believing. It's by believing and trusting and hearing and knowing and understanding that you're lost and you believe the gospel and then you're saved. So we understand that context. It doesn't mean you open your mouth. All right? Let's hear another verse that people really confuse and make the doctrine of sinner's prayer. Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20. Revelation 3.20. There are so many people who create the doctrine of sinner's prayer from Revelation 3.20. All right? Uh-huh. Let me go there right away. Revelation 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I'll come into him and I will sup with him and he with me. So there are people who say, Bas. You see, Jesus is standing at the door. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Open to him. You know how do you open? By saying a certain prayer. No. Actually, here is not being spoken to a person. It is being spoken to a church. Let's see verse 14 up there. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea. Right. So he's speaking to the church of Laodicea. Laodicea was the lukewarm church. And God was saying, Hey, you people are worshipping me without me. You're, you have locked yourself in a church and you're saying we are here worshipping Jesus. And I'm not even there. You people are lukewarm. You're doing your things. You're, you're, you're apostate. You see, that church is an apostate church. The only believing in Jesus who is outside them is not even with them. So he's saying, please, somebody open for me. Let me get into that church because you're worshipping me without me. <laughs> so... It's a very different thing. So it doesn't speak about that. And also, it's also in another dispensation. This is the time of tribulation when it's being spoken, those things. In the time of tribulation, people are saved by the everlasting gospel, not the gospel of Paul. So those are two different things, literally complete different gospels. At the time of Paul, you are saved by the gospel of God, the gospel which was given to Paul by Jesus Christ. It's called the gospel of God or the gospel of grace. Here in the time of tribulation, you can confirm in Revelation 14, 6, it is says that people will be saved by the everlasting gospel, gospel which will be preached from an angel from heaven. So it's not the same gospel here, all right? Then let's see another uh, heresy verse, which people try to wake up and say, this forms the doctrine. In Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Matthew 7, 7 to 8. This is a verse which talks about someone asking. Matthew 7, 7 to 8. Let's see. 
7, 7 to 8. It says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and shall be opened to you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. Uh, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So people say, no, 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 you see now, ask and shall be given to you. So I ask Jesus or I ask uh, for, for my salvation and then he shall give me. <laughs> Let's look at the context. The verse, verses 9 and 10, proves this is a son asking his father for bread and fish. It's not a sinner asking for salvation. Let's see. Verses 9 and 10. What does it say? Or what... Uh, verse 9 and 10. Or oh, what man is there of you, whom his own son asks bread, and he will give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, he will give him a serpent? So this is a father and a son. He's not a stranger, a sinner, and, and God. No, that is not a stranger and another stranger. You see, when you're a sinner, you're a stranger to God. But when you're a son and child, then already you're a child of God. You're born again. So this, this is a son and father relationship. And also it is in a very different time. At the time of the law still here. Like I told you, Jesus had not even revealed the gospel to Paul. So you see, this sinner's prayer, literally, it's, a, it's something which you cannot even understand. Because it was started by people who are called the Unitarians and the Universalists. These are the people who started the sinner's prayer. You, universalist. Unitarians. And the Catholics. This whole sinner's prayer came from the Catholic, Universalist, Unitarians. And this was uh, in the early 1900s. So something starting in the early 1900s, does it mean all through people are wrong? It's only in the 1900s, in the time of apostasy, that now people have known the truth. No, they are falling away from the truth. This is the time of apostasy. This is the time that many people are falling away from the truth. This is the time that we also see other weird Bible versions like the NIV are being uh, written. Written by, do you know... The NIV has almost 1,600 missing Bible verses. Missing. So how do you edit the Bible? And other verses have been changed and changed in one way or another. And most of the people, they don't care. They say, mm, you see, as long as uh, I'm just checking translation. No, there's nothing about checking translation. It's about you follow the, the original Bible, King James 1611 authorized version. Or you follow these other heretic Bible verses and at the end of the day, all they will teach you is the sinner's prayer. They will never, even this whole thing of uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Look at the word how, it's not there. It's not showing how Jesus died. It just gives you stories, all right? So you find the word how, which is really important. How, showing how Jesus died, but at the cross shedding his blood. It's not even there. So get away from this heretic Bible, the new versions of the Bible. And follow the right Bible. Actually, if you check, it's only in the King James Bible, which speaks Revelation 13 verse 18. 18, which says the mark of the beast will be in your hand. Most of these Bibles say it will be on your hand. So on can just be uh, uh, something that you have just maybe uh, like a watch or something which is on. So they are trying to convey you and give you another message. But the right message is it will be in your hand, in your forehead. So that's why you need to get out from these other heretic Bible uh, Bibles which only give you an apostate kind of gospel. All right. Let's go to another Another thing, so like I've told you, all these sinners' prayers started with the Catholic, Universalist, Unitarians in the early 1900s. And actually before they used to say, ask, there are even some who believe, who even say, ask Mary into your heart. Ask Mary to save you. Yeah? And then you can confess, you know it all started by confess to a priest. How do you confess to a guy that you, you guys have been drinking, fornicating and doing all those things together? And then now... Sunday morning, hey priest, you know this and this. And then he's just looking at you and you guys are having booze last night together. And how can a sinner forgive a sinner? He doesn't work. So all this thing of confess, say the sinner's prayer, say what you did, confess. It all started with the Catholics. yeah. And even the Catholics, they say that they are married to the church. 
You see, the priests, they say they are married to the church. The, 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 the area where they are, they, they are running a church, that church, they are married to that priest. Who marries the church? Jesus Christ. So they want to get themselves high above Christ. They, even the Pope, they say the vicar of Christ. Vicarius Fili Dei in Latin. The vicar of Christ. And it's even written in those uh, hearts that they wear. What does vicar of Christ mean? In place of Christ here on earth. How can you be in place of Christ? That one cannot work. John 6.37. That's another verse that people use a lot. John. John 6.37. It's another verse that they use to create their sinner's prayer thing. Mm-hmm. John 6.37. They say, all that the Father given me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. So people say, you see, when you come to the Father, he will not cast you out. But let's look at the context. Verse 35 tells us the context, that you come to Jesus through believing and trusting the gospel. Let's see verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So he says, if you believe, you come to me. You come to me through believing. Let's see another, another one. Luke 23, 42. Luke 23, 42. Luke 23:42. Uh, we see another one here, Luke 23, 23, verse 42. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. All right. So people say, Uh-huh. You see this thief said, Remember me. He said, He said a certain, a certain thing. Now, let's see this. This is uh, The context is that this is before Jesus died. Jesus was still at the cross. He had not died. And uh, this is before the gospel was even revealed to Apostle Paul. All right? So that's a very different dispensation. So that sinner's prayer is not for you today. Luke. Let's see. Luke 18.35. Luke. Luke 18.35. To, to around what? To 43. Luke 18, 35 to 43. This is the blind man. The blind man. Luke 18, 35 to 43. And it came to pass as he was come nigh to Jericho, a certain blind man said, sat by the way, Side begging, and hearing the multitude pass by, he asked what it meant. And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth passes by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And they, and they which went before rebuked him, that he should hold his peace. But he cried as much more, and thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood and commanded him and, and to be brought unto him. And w when he was come near, he asked him, saying, What wilt thou? that I do unto thee. And he said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Receive thy sight, thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately he received his sight and followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise unto God. So people say, you see this, this person called, called, he, he said, Jesus, have mercy on me. And then they say, that is the, a prayer. But the context is, this is a blind man asking to have his sight regained. So he's not looking for eternal salvation. He's looking for his sight to be regained. It's not salvation. And verse 42 explains that Jesus actually telling him, your faith has healed you. So faith is what? Faith is believing. Faith. He says faith. All right. Let's see another one. Mark 10, 46. Mark 10. 46 to around 52. All right. So this one I don't have to read. Is the story about the blind Bartimaeus asking Jesus to have mercy on him, to, re to regain his sight. And Jesus also says, your faith has healed you. You can just go there. So is the blind Bartimaeus. No, he's not asking for, 
for salvation. All right? So, personally, I'm not against prayer. What I'm just saying is this whole heresy of thinking that this, the prayer can save you. The prayer can save no one. You can only be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can be saved by obeying the gospel. You can be saved by that. And as I finish up, the other people, especially today's Christians, who say you can lead someone to Christ using the Romans rod. They call it the Romans rod. All right? Let me show you this. The Romans rod is uh, several verses that they always say and tell somebody, now, when you know this, then you can be saved. The Romans road. Uh, Romans road. All right? This is the Romans road. They say Romans, Romans, and then Romans, and then Romans. There are several verses that they always say. Romans 3... 10 and then Romans 3:23 and then Romans 5:12 and then Romans 10:13 All right So let's read these verses and see what they say That is they call it the Romans road Have you taken this believer to through the Romans road this sinner through the Romans road have they understood all right, let's see, Romans 3.10, what does it say? As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. You tell us a, a sinner, hey, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. After you show him that verse, you show him 3.23. For all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. Hey, do you know all have sinned, have come short of the glory of God? And then you say, Romans 5.12, 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed uh, upon all men, for that they have all sinned. So you, tell, you see, all people have sinned, and then you tell them Romans 10.13. You tell them, now, since you have known you have sinned, then for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, do you want to call upon the name of the Lord? Then immediately you show a sinner this, you tell them, now, do you want to call? Call upon the name of the Lord. And immediately after saying that, you tell them, okay, these are the A, B, C of salvation. All right? And then you tell them, admit, all right? Admit that you're a sinner. Believe. All right? And confess. Now, after you show them this Romans road, and then you tell them, now admit con and uh, believe and confess. Now, are these people saved? No. Why? Because, yes, you can say, fine, I am a sinner. You believe, you say, uh, okay, so I believe in Jesus, then that's it. Then I confess, okay, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and all that. Are you saved? No. Why? Because, number one, you did not understand that you're lost. You have just been told, just admit, admit it, admit it, just say, just say you're a sinner. Please, 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 admit it. No, but have you understood that you're lost? Have you really known... Hey, the way I'm seeing things, the way I'm understanding, then I am literally a sinner. Yes, you've been, you might have, let's say, for example, let's say, you, probably you've admitted because you've known that you're lost. Fine, let's, let's be positive about it. Then you're told to believe. So you've admitted, I am a sinner, yes, then believe. So what do you believe and you have not even heard the gospel? Has this person been told the gospel? Has he been told the gospel? What's the gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection. You've just been told how much of a sinner you are. Fine. You may have understood that you're lost. Then you are told to believe. What are you believing and you have not heard the gospel? You see, they try to create a bloodless gospel. You don't believe the gospel. What Jesus did for you, this is what you should believe. You're only told, believe the prayer. Believe. Just say this prayer. And then after that, you're told, confess. You know, just believe and confess. Say this prayer, the ABC of salvation. Just say it and then you're saved. No, you're not saved. You don't hear the, you have not heard the gospel. You have not even understood the gospel. Because unless you understand and then you believe. This Romans road, it's only leading you to Rome. All right? It's only leading you to Rome. And Rome is where? Where the whole thing started, the sinner's prayer. So at the end of the day... You're lying to yourself. Believe the gospel. This is the gospel. Believe it. And when you believe it, you'll be saved. Thank you very much. I know that was a great message. You can share it to other people. God bless you.